So to officially jump in, out of St. Louis, I'm, I'm told that this place is also called the Lou. Is that something y'all say? Do people from the UK look at you funny? <laughs> <laughs> This is actually not my first time in St. Louis. I was back here for a happiness meetup in 2011, which was my first exposure to a city museum. And of course, I'm, I'm familiar with the St. Lunatics and other cultural ambassadors you have out there in the world. Though I was not aware that uh, St. Louis hosted the World's Fair in 1904. And in fact, uh, many amazing technological innovations have come out of here, including the wireless telephone, x-ray machines, electric streetcars, and the first prototypes of personal automobiles, which back then were both gas and electric. So it took like 100 years to come back to the electric. <laughs> um, so it seemed fitting to have the event here and also to look at where WordPress has been and where we're gonna go. Uh, this event was brought to you by 47 organizers, 122 volunteers, and 90 speakers yesterday and today. This event was also brought to you by the sponsors that make it so that the ticket is so inexpensive. Uh, thank you to Bluehost, WooCommerce, Jetpack, and Google. <laughs> so as we head into the final months of 2019, with actually our earliest WordCamp US in a while, um, it's gonna take a time to reflect on everything that we've worked together on, collaborated, our accomplishments, and just everything been going on with this year. Uh, we've had two core releases so far this year. Uh, the first WordPress 5.1, uh, named for Betty Carter, included the first iteration of the Site Health screen, which some of you might be familiar with. Uh, oh, got a few fans. <laughs> the idea behind this is that, again, WordPress is all about empowering users, and we wanted to put the information and the tools in the hands of users as well to keep their site running in tip-top shape as we power an ever-increasing percentage of the web. It is our responsibility and behooves us to try to make sure that portion of the web is safe, secure, up-to-date, and running the latest and greatest stuff. Um, so this allows, gives people information they can either use themselves or get in touch with uh, their support hosting or things like that. We had a lot of uh, developer experience improvements in 5.1, including the cron API. <laughs> this is kind of the thing that runs in the background of WordPress that makes Actions happen at certain times. So let's say you schedule a post. Have you ever wondered how that actually gets posted at the time when you schedule it? Uh, we have kind of a, a weird cron thing built into WordPress. <laughs> We've enhanced it now so that uh, advanced hosts or, or hosts that have a lot of cron uh, scheduled tasks can um, hook into that and make it more efficient. We also, for the multi-site fans in the room, added a site meta feature, which gives developers a more performant way to store arbitrary data as opposed to just dumping everything in options like we used to. 5.2, named for Jaco Pastorius, came out in May. Uh, this one was pretty exciting because what you see on the left there is the old widget screen, and on the right is the new widgets, all available within Gutenberg, which also means that you can edit them in line and see exactly what they're gonna look like uh, in the real-time Gutenberg interface. We also, I did a quick iteration based on feedback from y'all saying that there were a lot of blocks, <laughs> good problem to have. So we made it for yourself or for your clients. You could hide or show certain blocks. Uh, we have a block manager. And then finally, you shouldn't see this anymore. <laughs> WSOD stands for the white screen of death. Um, I guess originally it was called this uh, because you know, it was a play on the blue screen of death that Windows used to famously have. But basically what this means, if you visit your site and you see this, there was probably some sort of PHP error or something that is preventing your site from loading. And unfortunately, that makes it also hard to fix your site <laughs> if it's erroring out. Uh, so now when something like this happens, particularly from an auto upgrade or a plugin upgrade, you'll get a special email with a link that lets you uh, basically navigate to a URL which deactivates the plugin uh, before uh, it loads and allows you to then uh, turn it off and get back into your site. Uh, so again, this is just an example of something coming up from users, coming up from the support forms that we've identified as common barriers in our user experience and did a lot of work uh, to try to rectify. 
WordPress 5.3 is coming out on November 12th, so just around the corner. Uh, this is not a pre-announcement of the Jazzer. We always do that on the day. <laughs> so uh, you will see which uh, Jazz person is named for. But it is a very, very exciting release um, for a number of things. We have over 150 block editor improvements. So some of you might not know, but the version of Gutenberg that's been shipping with WordPress 5.2 uh, is a few months out of date now. And there's been lots of updates since then, as I will talk about more later. Uh, but it is, I'm very, very excited to get all the Gutenberg improvements in the hands of a wider audience. It's also coming with a new default theme. This is 2020. Uh, it is a Gutenberg first, beautiful uh, CMS powered theme with an original design contributed by Anders Noren. And then of course it's expanded by the 2020 team. Uh, it is really slick. I have switched my own site, ma.tt, over to it. <laughs> and uh, it really highlights some of the power of Gutenberg. So I highly encourage checking it out. Uh, if you would like to get involved in some of the final, I guess we're basically done, but if you want to see the code behind it and some of what went into it, uh, you can check it out on GitHub as well. In the vein of improving things for administrators and making WordPress easier to run for everyone, uh, we've put in a little screen that just kind of verifies uh, your admin email, which is separate from your user email. So we would send out emails like when things were auto-updating or when things broke, but we found out that a lot of people had set up that email when they first started and never looked at it again. So now about every six months, you'll get like a little, hey, is this still your best email type screen? Uh, again, these things seem simple, but it's a foundation on which we can build a lot else on because now we can start to make more things dependent on that admin email. Then also 5.3 is going to have some more developer stuff. There's going to be so much Gutenberg, but I'll talk about that later. Um, we did time and date component fixes uh, that probably at least three people here in the audience know about. <laughs> Let's raise your hand if you know what those mean. Ah, pretty savvy audience. That's at least 40. And we, of course, updated to be compatible with the latest PHP 7.4, which is, of course, faster and better than ever. It was also a year where we raised the minimum PHP version of WordPress. <laughs> we ended support for PHP 5.2 to 5.3. And I have an interesting stat that for people running WordPress 5.2, uh, uh, which is our latest stable release, 83% um, on PHP 5.0 or PHP 7 or later. So we are seeing people who are updating WordPress are also updating PHP, which is very exciting. Um, however, as we were digging into these stats, we found something else, which is about 10% of all the WordPresses we're tracking are on older versions of PHP. So we think this might be contributing to some people being sort of stuck on some older versions of WordPress, that it seems that they are uh, running a higher percentage um, than the general population of older versions of PHP, which we track going all the way back to 5.0 right now. So we still have a lot of work there. 10% of the WordPresses on the world still on a too old to upgrade PHP ends up being a lot of them. <laughs> you could call that about 3% of the web. So uh, it sort of woke me up to the fact that we're going to need to really dive into these and work with uh, the web host and the people, <clears throat> excuse me, hosting them, try to get in there to, to get these on the latest and greatest. While this has all been going on, there's been a ton of fun stuff happening on the mobile side of WordPress, which is uh, a crucial, important for user adoption part that sometimes we forget about in the day-to-day -day development. So of the 38 core blocks that are in Gutenberg, we have now ported 10 of them to mobile, and we got Gutenberg on mobile in the first place. So congrats to that team. <clears throat> So the block editor is now available on both iOS and Android devices, um, including one additional block coming out in the release coming out on Monday. We are almost done with offline support, which means you will be able to blog and use the WordPress app on a plane, train, or automobile when you are not connected, or maybe even at a conference like this. <laughs> and we have a dark mode done on iOS, and that will be coming to Android in a matter of weeks. Of course, the people side of WordPress, as we just heard from that, uh, the open film, is one of the most exciting. And the events and people uh, side of WordPress has had an exciting year as well. In 2019, there will be 141 WordCamps 
Those are the big ones all over the world, 34 of those in brand new cities. We also have this new thing, 17 of which, and one of which tomorrow, called Kids Camps, which is, yeah. <laughs> Events adjacent to work camps designed specifically uh, for our younger contributors. Um, in fact, I believe at this camp, we had one of our youngest, uh, here at Work Camp US, one of our youngest speakers ever. Can you confirm that? Yeah? Four at what age? Let's call it 14 or 15. Uh, so very, very excited for a new generation. Uh, it's a little scary to also think that they weren't born when WordPress started. <laughs> I don't know if that made any of y'all feel old. It definitely made me feel a little advanced. <laughs> We've had over 5,000 meetups. The WordPress meetups are the more like monthly events happening all over the world in almost every city. And 16 do action uh, charity hackathons. So this is where WordPress volunteers and community members come together and create websites for nonprofits and set them up to just have a beautiful web presence. This was also a year when we started bringing in uh, more of the people's stories to the WordPress.org uh, blog, our news site. So the icon on the left is HeroPress. If you haven't come across HeroPress before, highly recommend checking it out. And maybe you might even have a story you want to share there. HeroPress is a community site which highlights uh, the journeys of how people came to WordPress and the effect it's had on their life and the effect they've had on WordPress as well. We started highlighting one of these per month uh, on the WordPress.org blog, and it's been really, really exciting to get to know more of the people behind WordPress. And in fact, many of them uh, are stories that are new to me as well, so it is a must-read for me every month. There's a bittersweet part, or a sad part of 2019 as well, that we, uh, we did lose some community members, um, notably Viper007 Bond, also known as Alex Mills, who's a longtime contributor, friend and colleague. Um, I also recognize that many people might have lost other folks in the community, so I did want to take just a brief uh, moment of silence to remember and thank uh, those who are no longer with us. Alex was an amazing contributor uh, to WordPress, a great friend, a great colleague. Um, we are, Automatic is putting together a scholarship to parallel the Kim Parcell scholarship that's been going on for a few years now that brings someone to WordCamp US. And this will be targeted at a plugin developer um, who hasn't had the chance to visit uh, WordCamp US yet. And so there'll be a full scholarship, full ride for them. And the beautiful part of this is actually Alex's story mirrors that quite a bit. Uh, his mom was telling me where he was a little bit more uh, introverted, um, but he found out there was going to be a work camp nearby to him. Even though he'd been a big contributor, he didn't, had never been to any of the events and went, and that was part of what allowed him to blossom into finding a new set of friends, a new community, a job at Automatic, kind of everything uh, that changed for him in that kind of last decade. Um, it has been a very, very eventful 11 months. Uh, we've had lots of ups and downs. Um, that's what this graphic is illustrating. <laughs> and, um, but we've had thousands of people come together as well. I do want to rewind a little bit and talk about where we were just about a year ago. So close your eyes and imagine uh, that WordPress 5.0, probably the biggest change we had ever made to WordPress in its 16-year history, came out the day before WordCamp US started in Nashville. <laughs> We had people coordinating work from airplanes. They were impromptu groups of core developers testing and packaging the release in the hallways. The polyglots of marketers were, support teams were just scrambling to get everything ready. And of course we had that snazzy release video. That was a pretty controversial year, uh, that year. Um, you know, we came together and decided to make this big change because we wanted to, well first, disrupt ourselves. Uh, we wanted to empower more WordPress users to realize our mission of democratizing publishing we want to make the web a more open and welcoming place. But um, you know, Gutenberg got some uh, feedback. <laughs> These are all real tweets or quotes from articles. I don't want to pile on to the Gutenberg hate, but come on, this is nowhere near ready. I think it's safe to say absolutely capitals hate the Gutenberg editor on WordPress now, and a lowercase p to pour salt in the wound. <laughs> Gutenberg is just plain terrible and barely functional. A design should make my life easier, not harder. 
And finally, don't update to WordPress 5.0. <clears throat> you know, there was lots and lots of feedback on that. And I think we learned a lot, uh, both in the process, uh, but also in how we can communicate change better in the future. Although there are no changes on the horizon as big as Gutenberg was. <laughs> um, you know, think of that as like, you know, when batters swing with a couple bats before they go up to the mound. We've now had really good practice for any future, future changes we want to make. Um, I think that we also uh, have a great opportunity when we make big changes in the future. Sort of build that trust in the conversations around testing, using GitHub for development, things like accessibility. So I understand why we had a lot of this feedback, but we did get through it together. So thank you. We have had, since that 5.0 release, 20 releases of the Gutenberg plugin. So the pace of iteration of Gutenberg has kept up. And I'm also very, very proud to say, because there was some discussion around kind of contributions, um, that the number of Gutenberg contributors since 5.0 has grown from 200 to uh, over 480, over, develop, uh, over doubling uh, year to year. Um, I'm also very, very excited to say that even as WordPress becomes more advanced, we incorporate new technologies, you're all learning JavaScript deeply, is that um, we're going to have the most contributors we ever had to WordPress ever this year. So in 2018, we had about 594 contributors. This year, so far, we're at 1,122 unique contributors. Thank you. Also, thank you for clapping. It allows me to take a drink. <laughs> if you want to throw some more in there. The current release, version 5.3, coming out November 12th, is set to have the most contributors of any release in our history by over 100 people. I'm also happy to say that the adoption of Gutenberg is going fantastic. We have 2.7, over 2.7, more sites using Gutenberg than not. And this is actually probably undercounting because we're subtracting everyone using the classic editor from this. But of course, those of you who might be using the Classic Editor know, by the way, Classic Editor is a plugin we uh, promoted very heavily with the upgrade to 5.0 that allowed people to still use the old editor as well as using the new editor. But it actually, Classic Editor doesn't turn off Gutenberg, it allows you to toggle between them so you can decide on a per post basis what you want to use. So we believe some uh, interesting number, uh, I don't have any exact thing, but interesting number of the Classic Editor users are actually also using Gutenberg as well. We just passed, uh, two days ago, 50 million posts made with Gutenberg. And that number is going up fast. We're seeing over 270,000 per day. And again, this is a subset of the posts that we're tracking. This is only uh, folks running the Jetpack plugin that we get this stat from. So um, there is even a larger, that is the, the floor of where that number actually is. So to look at where Gutenberg is today and to talk about some of the development and work we've been putting into it, first and foremost, I want to talk about performance. I am so proud of the team for this graph. So what you see on the left there is the average seconds to load from version 5.0, then all the way on the right is uh, release candidate 2 of version 5.3. So we've halved the time it takes to load um, Gutenberg and the post and edit screen. We also, one of the things that we noticed when we first launched is that the actual typing lag um, for all the complex things we were doing in Gutenberg was fairly high. So that has gone from 170 milliseconds in 5.0, now down to 53 milliseconds. Again, uh, down by two thirds in terms of the speed that's going in there. We put in some fun user uh, enhancements. So for example, uh, when we first launched, when you move blocks around, which is what you're seeing on the left, they used to just pop around. We've added uh, motion, um, so now you kind of can see what's going on. It just feels a lot better. And of course, this also respects the motion sensitivity settings uh, that you can set on your browser for accessibility. We added a typewriter mode. So this is pretty fun because like a classic typewriter, it keeps your vertical place as you type. So this avoids jarring jumps or cases of typing near the bottom of the screen. Just a much more pleasant editor experience and something that now I want from every single editor I use. Uh, we added block previews. So what you're seeing here is now when you, uh, because the blocks, um, you know, just the, when it was just the icon and the name, you'd never know, we recreated a little bit of the mystery meat problem we were trying to solve. So what the block previews do is show you right next to it um, exactly, 
or a preview of what the block is going to look like and it allows for more explanation. So if you were clicking on something and you're like, what is masonry? <laughs> Which is a fair question to ask. <laughs> It'll show you that that's actually what we call these cool tile galleries, kind of Pinterest style galleries. We created a quick navigation mode, which uh, helps with both usability and accessibility for you to be able to navigate through blocks with a keyboard. And you can press escape to go into that navigation mode. What is coming for Gutenberg? Because I'm even more excited about uh, the catch up that we're doing in version 5.3. This is the simplest thing, <laughs> but wow, we actually found uh, we've been gathering some stats on what people are searching for, uh, for Gutenberg blocks. And one of the very, very top things was social icons. These are like the NASCAR stickers of the web. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. But you can now add um, uh, icons any place you can put a Gutenberg block. And we created a really nice interface for doing so. Uh, a huge project that we've been working on is taking the navigation menu. So this is what previously was an entire screen inside of WordPress with its own everything. That's what you see on the left. And making it an inline Gutenberg block that still supports all the same functionality and even adds some new. So what you're seeing there is a color picker, uh, which previously wasn't even something you could do with the old uh, navigation editor. Um, by the way, you might notice we renamed it to, from menus to navigation. This is going to make all the restaurant users of WordPress understand it a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> Real issue we've run into in testing. Uh, we've created the ability to do gradients in Gutenberg and a, a gradient tool. This was actually pretty fun because it's a fairly complex interaction, but we were able to put it together in an uh, exciting way so you can create blocks like it's 1999 again. Uh, that, of course, pairs well with our multi-button block, <laughs> another thing. <laughs> these seem basic, but these are things that we were running into quite a bit that people were asking for. Um, we are very now far, we're now a year into the idea and the reality that there are, there's going to be a thousand block blooming. So people are creating blocks left and right, and it's, uh, it's really exciting to see what's going on. So one of the things that I'm uh, most proud of the team of for doing as well is that they have a block directory. So what this is, is that you're going to be able to install uh, blocks in the block directory completely in line. So what you just saw happen right there was, what was happening in the background rather, is someone typed in a block they were looking for. They didn't find anything. They went, it called out to the centralized WordPress.org block directory. They clicked add it. And what happened was essentially like a plugin got installed, activated in the background, and the block was available to insert completely instantly, completely in line with no page loads or anything. <laughs> this is also really fun because as the block directory grows to incorporate hundreds and thousands of blocks, you can use those building blocks just in line as, as what you're doing. Uh, we are also going to expand this to include patterns. Patterns, block patterns are what we're calling collections of blocks. So if you could imagine like a testimonial pattern or you know, slider type things, uh, basically collections of, of the basic building blocks that uh, take the most common patterns that you see on websites all over the world and make them accessible to install with just a single click. The idea here and what we're really trying to enable uh, with these fundamental building blocks is that you could look at any website in the world and build that inside of WordPress with just a few clicks. It is coming. On the community side of things, we've also seen some uh, pretty cool examples. Um, this is the Morgan Banker, Mortgage Bankers Association, a uh, site built by RT Camp, and they created a block template for their newsletter functionality. So what's actually happening right here is they are building an email newsletter in line with Gutenberg. They give a quick call out to WordCamp Phoenix, uh, any folks from Phoenix here? Nice. Which also got a little call out in the film. Also made me realize how weird the word Phoenix is when you look at it. It's like the word weird. You're like, ah, oh, is that O or E there? Uh, this is 100% uh, blocks. And in fact, many of the WordCamps, including WordCamp US, are now building their entire sites just using Gutenberg and blocks. Nine Publishing is using the interface and two room two newsrooms 
uh, for different mail outs they're doing for Gutenberg. They estimate uh, that they are saving 15 hours a week for editors across both newsrooms when they implemented this Gutenberg interface. Finally, Pragmatic created a plugin which takes a client created Word document, not WordPress, Word, <laughs> and associated images, imports the content directly into Gutenberg Editor, and using a combination of core and custom blocks, basically makes it ready to go um, into their publishing system, which again, super, super cool. Could we do a quick round of applause for these folks building a Docker user? And also for deciphering the Word document format. <laughs> it's impressive in and of itself. Last year, remember, it actually came up in the Q&A. Uh, someone asked what percentage Gutenberg was done. And I said we were about 10% done. I'm very excited to say that uh, we're now about 20% done. <laughs> so the important changes, and part of why we, we made the investment in Gutenberg, was this is the fundamental foundation that we're going to build the next decade of WordPress under. And I, so we'll do about 10% per year. But already, as we get to 20%, it is incredible, humbling, and awe-inspiring, everything that people are able to create with what's in there uh, already. To give a quick reminder, there are going to be four phases of Gutenberg. We are, uh, I would say, on the tail end of the easier editing phase. This is where we're tackling all the usability problems we had in TinyMC and our former editors, uh, where people were having trouble manipulating embeds, short codes, images, basically getting the layouts and formatting that they wanted with the old editor. We have increased that usability tremendously. And the Gutenberg team still does at least one usability test per week and posts them at least once a month to the make blogs, uh, showing uh, kind of the progress of those kind of real world you know, not people here in this room, people new to WordPress, how are they able to use this interface? We're currently in the thick of the second phase, phase two, which is all around customization. I'll give you a little update there. We have completed converting all the widgets to blocks, block customization, navigation menu, which isn't a plugin, but it's gonna come in core, uh, the widget block screen, and customizer widgets panel with block support. We are finishing up a block pattern directory and implementing full site editing. You like how I slipped the biggest thing there just as a final bullet point? <laughs> uh, but it is coming along and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. As a quick reminder, the final two phases, um, the third one is going to be collaboration, which is where we take everything that you see in Gutenberg and make it so you, that you can real time co-edit with anyone else who is editing the same things that you are, and also think a lot and invest some uh, development into the workflow around changes and sharing changes, previews, et cetera. And then finally, uh, last, we're gonna tackle the Babelfish problem <laughs> and have multilingual support, core to WordPress and core to Gutenberg. Yeah, and Europe always gets super excited about that. <laughs> We're still at the very, very beginning of this journey. Um, we've been doing Gutenberg for about two years now. There were 47 releases prior to 5.0 coming out. We've had 20 since then. Um, but it's the community, all of you, that really make WordPress great. It was so interesting how quickly the individual interviews in that film all went back to that same word, community, community. Uh, there's so many parts of how you can get involved with WordPress. And I want to talk about some of the ways or some of my suggestions for if you're watching this, either the thousand something people here in this room or the many on the live stream or the folks who are going to watch this later, um, ways that you can get involved in being a co-creator of WordPress. First is helping be the change. And you might have heard before every single talk we've given that tomorrow there's going to be a contributor day. <laughs> so if you are able to get to uh, one of the big word camps. There's typically a contributor day afterwards. And what this is, is kind of like the real life version of what we have online. So instead of going to a make.wordpress.org P2 and seeing what's going on, there will be a physical table for all the people who are passionate about 
uh, localization, all the people working on the editor, all the people working on whatever that is. And you can walk over that table and be part uh, alongside the people who make WordPress. I love this concept, and it's one of the most powerful things in the world, that with every bit of technology that you interact with every day, someone made that. And with WordPress, which many of you interact with every day, it's probably someone sitting here in this room, and you could very easily become one of them. So go by the contributor day uh, to get involved. Another fun thing is uh, the Gutenberg plugin is still there. So when people upgrade to 5.0, we um, turned off the Gutenberg plugin for them automatically because we had, I think, over a million testers before. Um, but about 270,000, 275,000 people have turned it back on. This means that they are getting those uh, weekly or fortnightly updates to the Gutenberg plugin um, before those things get shipped into core. So if you would like to see the latest and greatest of what Gutenberg could be, and there's a very active feedback channel there for reporting bugs. Basically, if you'd like to help define what's coming next in Core Gutenberg, uh, install this plugin. It's also neat because it kind of gets you uh, the latest and greatest before the core release comes out. We've also been doing a lot of experiments with beta plugins to allow us to test features before they go into Core. And one that's pretty small still, only a little over 100 sites running it, uh, but I'd like people to uh, check out and participate with is design experiments. So this is where we're actually able to make user interface changes to WordPress in a plugin before we put it into core and can get feedback and also do user testing on this. Basically, one of the best things we learned from Gutenberg is that we don't need to be beholden to the core release schedule, which at our best is three times per year, to be able to rapidly iterate and get changes in the hands of users. Um, users are the oxygen for any software, and without it, you don't really know, despite whatever planning which you might do, you don't really know how people are going to use and interact with the software. So it's really, really important. I want to highlight this fun tweet from someone who uh, actually reinstalled the Gutenberg plugin. This is Hannah Smith said, I installed the Gutenberg plugin today, which upgrades the features that ship with Core. I wanted the cover block, and I was curious to check it out. OMG! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! <laughs> it's like a million times better. If this stuff goes in the Core, we're all in for a treat. Well done to all the contributors. So. You can be like Hannah <laughs> and have, there are three exclamation points in this tweet, which is pretty impressive for 280 characters. That's a high percentage of exclamation points to the rest of the characters in the tweet. We need more blocks. So uh, one of the most exciting ways to expand the kind of window of what people are able to do with WordPress today is creating more of those blocks. So if you're building sites for clients or friends or yourself, and you find yourself needing something that Gutenberg doesn't yet support, and you have the technical wherewithal, you've learned JavaScript deeply and are able to build it, uh, share that, please. Particularly if it's JavaScript only and can go in our, in our block directory. Um, as the blocks increase, it's almost like the people using the canvas of WordPress are getting new colors and textures and paintbrushes they can use. And the things that get created are so inspiring. Also, if you have that technical wherewithal or know a lot about WordPress, um, think about helping teach to change. So every single person who contributes to WordPress pretty much at some point had someone else help them get involved. That's part of why we have the contributor days. It's part of why we make all of our meetings open on Slack and put out all the notes on P2 and just try to help the whole, whole development of WordPress be as open as possible is, um, is that teaching aspect. It's really one of the only places in the world as well you can sort of work alongside developers who create the software that runs a third of the web. And so if you want to learn better PHP or better JavaScript, I can think of no better kind of master class or real world uh, studio with which to do that. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, hopefully you made it to the Get Involved booth, which was here at, uh, at the event. But if not, come to Contributor Day tomorrow, so I'll be happy to walk you through things. Or check out make.wordpress.org, because we all make WordPress together. Sharing your knowledge can also come through events and meetups. Uh, this is a map of all the meetups happening all over the world. Looks like even Greenland. Not Iceland, though. Come on, Reykjavik. What's going on? 
as you can see, all over the world, um, there is probably a WordPress meetup near you. And if there is not, like let's say you're in Iceland, you could start one. <laughs> and these are really, really fun ways to bring community together and also allow you to experience the best part of WordPress, which is the people. The software is pretty good, but the people are amazing. Uh, in 2020, we're also going to uh, redo our regional events, WordCamp US and WordCamp Europe, and we're going to add a new one, which is WordCamp Asia for the first time. <laughs> These regional events are fantastic for bringing together contributors in particular. So you get a lot of the local WordCamp organizers, a lot of the meetup folks come to these regional WordCamps and can really share and learn at a very, very high level. Uh, I believe WordCamp Asia will be in February, and this first year will be in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, so if you've ever wanted to visit there, <laughs> good excuse to. And WordCamp Europe is going to be Porto. Oh my god, that's right. Um, I love Porto. Too. <laughs> Porto in Portugal, uh, also where Port is from, if you ever enjoyed a good port. Um, so uh, check that out. And WordCamp US will be right back here in St. Louis. <laughs> I might need to come a week early just to go to like City Museum every day. I did not realize there was a roof, which makes me wonder. I was kind of wondering with my sister actually. It makes me wonder how many floors in between where I got to and where, where the roof was that I missed. Oh my goodness. I was, uh, we've apparently had more social media posts and tweets and Tumblr posts and WordPress blog posts, everything, this WordCamp than we've ever had. Uh, and I've been following it as well, the WCUS tag. And um, it's been really, really fun to kind of live vicariously through parts of this event I was at but did not see. <laughs> Why are we doing all this? Um, we're trying to help open the web. There is a very natural pendulum that swings both in societies and technology and in the web between open and closed. And as it swings back towards open, it doesn't happen for free, it doesn't happen automatically. It happens through a lot of hard work um, uh, from people like here in this room, um, creating the type of web that we want to live in and we want the people going to kids' camps and their children to live in. Uh, we are putting together for WordPress, a few, two final things that I'm going to plug. Um, first is now on wordpress.org slash news. We are doing our annual survey, which is a very exciting way to show for our corner of the web what is going on and the technologies and things that are happening. We are also translating this into, I believe, six or more languages. So we'll be able to, for the first time, or for uh, better than we have in the past, get feedback um, from uh, the non-English parts of WordPress as well. And then finally, a little surprise announcement for y'all is you saw a lot of talk for Five for the Future. Just to briefly reiterate, Five for the Future is this idea that if WordPress is a big part of your life. Um, try to think how you can take 5% of your time, however that might be defined. It could be money, resources, colleagues, whatever it could be, um, to put back in the comments so that uh, you know the kind of core WordPress, which is, again, built largely by like people here in this room, um, can grow and get better and be something that sort of we can benefit from and future generations can benefit from too. So if you have wordpress.org slash five, you can type the number or spell it out. We now have a directory. It's actually, I believe, came up in a question maybe last year. It might have been WordCamp Europe or here, which is, is there a way we can highlight the people who are contributing uh, the five for the future? So what this allows is either for individuals or organizations to pledge and show uh, everything uh, they are sort of pledging and, and committing to WordPress, and you can browse them. And then, of course, if you are ever trying to hire an agency or a web host or thinking like something like that, definitely take a look at the Five for the Future page to see which organizations um, are giving back to WordPress. And uh, try to vote with your wallet to support the folks who are uh, really making sure that WordPress can continue for many years and decades to come. All right, that's all I got.
Oh, oh, actually, wait, 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 wait. There's, there's one more thing. Are you all ready for this? So, um, this entire presentation was actually in Gutenberg. So this was all on a web page. <laughs> and in fact, the speaker view, which I'll bring over here, is another web page. And this was all edited. Let's see if I click this, what will happen? All edited uh, inside of WP Admin through Gutenberg. <laughs> Also, kind of amazing it didn't break, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me make this full screen again. Wait, bring this window back. Oh, I lost it. Presenter, speaker view. I'll bring that back. Full screen. And this code is all on GitHub. We'll be releasing it. And um, uh, can we give a quick round of applause for, stand up if you were working on this. <laughs> Ella, Mel, Mark, Tammy. There was so much code happening till about like 25 minutes ago. <laughs> I am impressed and amazed that that came together so well. So congratulations on that.